What we're seeing and we're waiting for more is around things like risk-based risk monitoring. Uh, we've heard about it for years. We've seen papers and guidelines from EMA and FDA. Nobody's really sort of adopted it and utilized technology to, to the point that, that they can really deliver. Yes, we see some targeted and triggered monitoring plans, but it really is just reduced source document verification. It's not really about bringing in technology, bringing in analytics, bringing in master data management to, to really sort of drive efficiency. Um, if you were to put this in the hands of the outsourcing people, if, if they decide that you're going to reduce source document verification by 50%, they expect to see the cost of monitoring go down by 50%. The reality is you still want the monitor to go on site. You want them to look at that complete patient record. The source document verification is a, is a minor component of viewing that patient and how that patient has been brought into the trial how they've been consented, do they meet the inclusion exclusion criteria, and how has that patient progressed from a, a welfare and protocol standpoint so that, the, that it, they are not just a valid part of the trial, uh, but they've been cared for appropriately under ICH GCP. And, and to do that is the critical part of monitoring, not doing the reverse monitoring to say this data item within the ECRF is matched and found within the, the patient record. Uh, and I think what we've got to realize is that the monitor has a key role on site in terms of the site relationship and, and many other aspects, not just source document verification. And I think uh, what we've seen within the, the Astellas organization is that that patient focus really translates across not just the Astellas team, but the whole Stellas INC team. So I think the role of the monitor will dramatically change over the next 18 to 24 months. I don't know how many people have looked at the Transcelerate um, position paper on risk-based monitoring, but if you haven't, I'd encourage people to look at that because I think that's going to dramatically change um, how we monitor what data is looked at inside an organization, the role of statistics inside an organization, the roles our MDs are going to be playing in real time looking at data, why we go out to site. So I, I think I think you know, if you want to look at disruptive technology, to me it's going to be risk-based monitoring. It's going to be able to sit at your terminal and to really understand the data in real time. And I think the organizations that have that technology are really going to be able to help the sponsors move more rapidly to embed that, understand the data in, in real time. I think that, that's true because um, when we look at the, at the IT uh, um, solutions that we're providing in this space, um, it's not just about cutting down source document verification. I mean, you know, part of the big thing here is we, we have central monitoring groups and we're pulling in information by patient and by site right across the study. And when you're down to, to before that, just CRA management, you're very much reliant on, you know, a CRA will see a limited number of sites and, and they may or may not see data patterns, but, but by, by deploying the, the, this, this sort of technology right across the study, you're getting the whole data of the study. You're seeing sites and then you know, looking at stuff the other day where, you know, a particular site, everybody's blood pressure ended in zero, you know, what does that mean, you know? Uh, so you, you're starting to see things that fall out for you. Know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, fall, fall out, fall out the obvious answer. <laughs> so, uh, you won't have to worry about source document verification. Uh, uh, so so you're, you're starting to see the data that, that falls outside, outside the patterns right across the study. Um, and it, there's more than risk-based monitoring, that, you know, that, that that's bringing uh, patient safety and quality uh, to, to the agenda, uh, which you know, I, I think the, the, the RBM is, is, is a part of that, but I, I think you're getting risk-based monitoring and a higher level of quality. The biggest challenge around this is getting the regulators to, to actually give some yeah. definitive, not, not just the vague guidelines, and, and the Transcelerate paper was was interesting, but it wasn't definitive as to this is how we're going to do it. It was overly generalized, right. and actually the thing that it didn't focus on is from my perspective, I, I don't know about others in the room, the biggest challenge is site performance. So the Transcelerate paper didn't focus on the fact that there are different grades of sites. There are some sites that, are, to be honest, are excellent. The, the physician, the whole site staff, their process, their controls, we probably don't even need to go on site. We just need to make sure that they're trained, they know the protocol, you could leave them alone. There are other sites that 
through our own collective knowledge, which as an industry we're not great at sharing, uh, those sites need more support, they need more development, they need more training, we've got to watch their processes, we've got to watch the way they handle turnover at the staff level, and maybe you control those sites more to say, we're going to put a more experienced monitor on, we're going to have more regular visits, we're going to cap your patient enrollment at a certain level and then assess those patients to that point in time before allowing further enrollment. The Transcelerate paper is too broad brush. It's assess the risk of the compound, determine the, the level of source document verification, determine the tools. The biggest risk in protocols is variability at the site level. And I think we have enough knowledge to, to be able to sort of pinpoint sites that need more help, more support, and should be under closer watch, which I think the tools that, that do exist um, sort of commonly across the industry and, and being further developed that give sort of analytics at the study and site level are, are, and patient level are, are key. But that's where I think the integration of the data becomes very important. So I think yeah. the Transcelerate paper sort of sets a platform. Then each company has different databases that we integrate. So I think if you start looking at yeah. the technology, we know which sites right from the get-go are going to need more oversight. And we know which sites are going to enroll quickly. And then we have to put a cap on to make sure certain things are being done. So I think you know within organizations, we have that. The risk-based monitoring, I think, that Transcelerate's put forward has really been done you know, with, with EMA, with FDA. And it's really opening up the dialogue because I think the initial guidance were, were rather generic. And this is about trying to figure out, you know, how do you really implement this across the industry? Yeah. So, so to get back to your question on, you know, how are we, how are we gaining efficiencies or how are we optimizing and, and leveraging technologies? Um, I think in our case, we made it very simple. So I'm bringing us back down to, to um, today, a um, little skeptical on risk-based monitoring versus site performance and protocol violations. But uh, one thing we agreed right up front is we wouldn't duplicate each other's technologies. Mm -hmm.